In this video, we are going to work to classify the local extrema of this function here. So our function is f of x equals 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 36x. Just as a reminder, what does it mean when I say local extrema? So here I'm looking for uh, my local minima. Maybe there's only one, but let's just say minima for now. And also the local maxima. I don't know yet how many of these there are, but um, that's what we're going to do. We're going to try to find them, and then we'll classify them. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is, well, what are my potential local minima and local maxima points? They come from the critical points of this function. And so the first thing I need to do is I need to find the critical points. All right, and so what are these? These are the places where, so we have two types of critical points. Either our derivative is equal to zero or the derivative does not exist. Okay, for this function, we actually only have to worry about the first case. Um, the reason for that is because we have a polynomial this function is defined for all x values. So for all real values x, this is defined, and so is its derivative. And so we actually, we don't need to worry about uh, this case for this specific example. For other examples, you will have to double check that. All right, so all we really need to know is when is our derivative equal to zero? So we're gonna start by computing the derivative. So the derivative of f with respect to x is going to be 6x squared minus 6x minus 36. So I'm just using the power rule uh, three times, for so once for each of my terms. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to factor this, and that's going to help me figure out what my x values are that are going to make this derivative equal to 0. Uh, I'm going to start by factoring out a 6 from each of my terms here. So I'll have 6 times x squared minus x minus 6. I didn't need to do that, but now since I've done that, it's a lot easier for me to see how am I going to factor this, um, this uh, expression right here. And so I'm going to factor this so it factors as 6 times x minus 3 times x plus 2. All right, so I still, I haven't um, done anything except factor this, and so now I wanna know when does this derivative equal zero? Well, it's going to be exactly when one of my three factors is equal to zero. And so from, well, first off, from this coefficient six, I don't get any x values, and so I'm just going to ignore that. From this second factor here, x minus three, uh, so if that is, if that factor is equal to zero, then that means that x is equal to positive three. If instead we have this last factor is equal to zero, then that means that the x value is negative two. Okay, and so what that tells us is that we have critical points when x is equal to uh, negative two, and when x is equal to positive three. Okay, I'm not gonna worry right now about what the y values are for those points. All I really need to know are what are the x values in order to classify my local extrema. Okay, and again, just as a reminder, um, and of course you can always go back through the video, but let me just say this um, now, these are the potential local extrema. Okay, and so now I want to see, well, first off, are they actually giving me local extrema? And if they are, are they giving me a minimum or a maximum? Okay, so that's my next step is to classify those critical points. And in order to do this, uh, so we do have some options for now. Um, well, in this video anyways, let's just use the first derivative test. So we're gonna use the first derivative test 
to classify the critical points. Okay, so what does that mean? So what that means is I'm going to use my first derivative um, in order to determine what the sign of the derivative is near these two critical points. And when I say the sign of it, I, I don't mean like the sine function. I mean, is it positive or negative? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a table of values. And so for my x values, Again, I want x values that are um, near these two critical points. And so I'm going to choose x values above, below, and between those. So let me start by putting my two x values in for my critical points. And now I just need to choose any x values that are, um, so to start, I need to choose an x value that is less than negative two. And so let me just choose negative three. I need to choose an x value that's between negative two and three, so let me choose zero. And then I need to choose an x value that is larger than three, let me choose five. Okay, so I have choices on which x values I use. All I need to be careful of is, or all I need to do is make sure that I've chosen x values that are to the left and the right of my critical points. All right, and so for the lower uh, row of my table here, what I want to do is I want to keep track of values of the derivative at each of these points. I'm going to start by filling in the value at my critical points. So those are easy to fill in because the critical points that we found, that was when the derivative was zero. And so I'm just going to go ahead and fill in zeros there. All right, and so then for each of the other x values, all I re really need to know is is the derivative positive or negative? And so for x equals negative three, so let me go ahead and plug it into the sort of nicely factored version of my derivative here. And so what I'm gonna have is six times negative three minus three times negative three plus two, which is equal to six times negative six times negative one. Okay, and I could multiply this out and I would get positive 36, but all I really need to keep track of is, is the answer positive or negative? So I'll have a positive times a negative times a negative. And so what I'm gonna have here is a positive value. Okay, so I'm gonna do that same trick for my other x values. And so for um, this one, so x is equal to zero, so I'll have six times zero minus three times zero plus two. So I'll have a positive times a negative times a positive. So that means we'll have a negative value here. And then for the last one, so an x is equal to five, we'll have six times five minus three times five plus two. So I'll have a positive times a positive times a positive, so overall that is going to be a positive answer. Okay, so once we have all of those signs, meaning whether they're positive or negative, something I like to do is I like to just start by sketching uh, what the graph might look like at these points. And so, and when I say the graph, I mean the graph of the function f. Okay, so things might get a little bit crowded here, um, but let's see. So if my derivative is positive, then that means my function f is increasing. And so as I move left to right, my graph should be going up. Let me try that again. My graph should be curving up. And then right when I hit negative two, it should level off. And the reason for that is because the derivative there is zero. So it will be increasing, it levels off, and then it's going to go back down. And the reason for that is because after negative two, it, the derivative is zero. And so that means that the function f should be decreasing. Okay, and so once I do this, I can see without even memorizing a rule, 
that at negative two, we're going to have a local maximum. So we can see by sketching the graph of f here that we're going to have a peak right at the x value negative two, and so that means we'll have a local maximum. Now let's do the same trick um, at three. And so before three, the derivative is negative, so that means the function will be decreasing. After three, the function, or sorry, the derivative is positive, so that means the function will be increasing. And so the shape of the graph here is going to look something like this. And so again, here before three, it's negative, so the graph is going down. Right at three, it levels off, and then after three, it goes back up. And so now we can clearly see that this is going to give us a local minimum. Okay, so at this point, we have classified our local extrema. Let's just go back uh, to the question to make sure that we fully answered it. Great, so we classified the local extrema of our original function. We have that there is a local minimum at x equals three and a local maximum at x equals negative two. I wanna end the video by just uh, sort of double checking our answer by actually showing what the graph of this function looks like. So I'm gonna scroll down to the next page. And when I do that, we see, so this is the graph of our original function. So it's the graph of um, y equals two x cubed minus three x squared minus 36 x. And we can see that uh, we do have a local maximum at the x value two. And we do have a local minimum here and that is right in between two and four, that's at x equals three. And so this confirms what we just found um, using derivatives.